Good afternoon, friends. It's good to be with you. Have you ever heard this phrase before? Have you ever heard yourself maybe even saying this phrase? What a waste of my time. What a waste of my time. I don't know about you, but time is a tough thing for me. It seems no matter what I tend to do, I'm always running just a little bit behind. I can never quite get everything done, and I can't always stay just right on schedule. And if I have to be really honest, I feel very entitled to my time. I feel very entitled to what is a good use of my time. For instance, I don't tend to feel like sitting in traffic is a good use of my time. I don't tend to feel like sitting in a grocery store line is a good use of my time. I don't tend to feel like waiting on hold for an hour is a good use of my time. Time's an interesting thing. No matter how much we try to control it, we are reminded sometimes in the most inconvenient ways that we do not control time. Time bothers us. Time bothers us because it shows us that we have a definitive beginning and a definitive ending, and that's not really ours to control. Time reminds us, reminds us when we lose a loved one too soon. Time reminds us of the deadlines that we try to meet every single day. Time reminds us that we only have so much of it, so we rush around trying to get as much of it as possible, maybe never always getting it all done. When it comes to time in our lives, sometimes we wonder, what do we really have to gain? Is it all just a waste? Today in our scripture, we're going to be looking at the book of Ecclesiastes. And the book of Ecclesiastes is a short book in the Old Testament that talks about wisdom. And the word Ecclesiastes really literally means teacher or preacher. And the preacher in Ecclesiastes is asking the question, what is the meaning of life? In the midst of chaos and destruction, they step back and they say, what are we really after? As we look at the book of Ecclesiastes, we realize that the preacher sounds a lot like us. They're trying to figure out what is up with time. Why does time bother us so much? In verse 2, we read that it says, Vanity of vanities, says the teacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. Here's our question. What do people gain from all the toil at which they toil under the sun? What do we really have to gain? That seems a little harsh. We have nothing to gain and are all the things that we do under the sun. It all just seems meaningless. That word vanity is used over and over in the book of Ecclesiastes. And it comes from this Hebrew word named hebel. And hebel literally translated means vain or meaningless or nothingness. Another translation of this word vanity is hebel. I'm sorry, not hebel, is breath. It's something we can't fully gain. It's not really something we can see. We just kind of know it's there. But it's vanity. We have nothing to gain from it. The book starts out feeling very hopeless. It makes us wonder why we can't control our time. It makes us wonder why we are wasting our time doing certain things and not having enough time to do the things that we really want to do. But luckily for us, the book of Ecclesiastes has more than just a couple of verses in one chapter. So we read on. We read on in chapter 2, in verse 24, that it says, A person can do nothing better than to eat and drink and find satisfaction from their toil. This, too, I see, is from the hand of God. For without Him, who can eat or find enjoyment? So what's the answer to our question? What do we do if we can't make time stand still? What are we really supposed to do in order to get the most out of our time? Our scripture today would say, just live, just live, eat and drink and find satisfaction in every day. What the scripture is talking about with us today is about being in the present moment, seeing all the things that we have to do and seeing it from a perspective, a perspective of not just a checklist, 
but as a perspective of joy. Today, our scripture day is posing us with a choice. Do we see our time as just a waste, as something we have nothing to gain from, or do we live and be in the present moment and see the joy that God has given to us? There's a great Disney movie. Uh, the movie came out a couple years ago called Meet the Robinsons. And it's about an imaginative little boy who loves inventions. And his most recent invention is a time machine where he can go back in his own memory. You see, he really wants to go back in his memory because he wants to catch a glimpse of the mother who dropped him off at the, the steps of the orphanage when he was an infant. As the movie unfolds, the boy is faced with a choice. Does he save the memory of the family he could have had? Or does he live in the present with the people that had become his family along the way? Our scripture today shows us that finding worth in our time is to find joy in our time. To live a life that embraces a perspective of joy. I mentioned to you earlier, earlier that Hebrew word hebel, that Hebrew word that we see that says vanity, 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 all is vanity. That word that I said literally means translated as breath. When we translate it as breath, it gives a whole new perspective to the scripture. You see, because when we translate it as breath, it is not something that we have anything to gain. It is not something that we can fully grasp. It's not even something we can see. Yet it is an utter gift that we have been given from God. And isn't time the same way? Isn't time just like breath in that way? It's not something we really have anything to gain from. It's not something we can hold on to or keep or store away. Yet it is the utter gift from God that we have been given. And so the book of Ecclesiastes, by the time we come to chapter 3, we have an answer to our question. What gain have the workers from their toil? I have seen the business that God has given to everyone to be busy with. He has made everything suitable for its time. The business of God shows us to have a perspective of joy and a purpose in the midst of everything under the sun. Friends, finding worth in our time is not something that is very easy. We do a lot of different things. We, we juggle a lot of different balls. It's not always easy to find meaning in everything that we do. But yet we have to find a plan. We have to find a way to discipline our lives in order to see that perspective, in order to see that, that goal that God is trying to show us of joy. So whenever I try to go about something and get to that goal, I come up with a plan. So I have a plan for us today. In order to really seek out the joy of our time, in order to really find perspective, I think we could take a lesson from a group of people who know a little bit about being in the present moment. Many of you know of the acting style of improvisation. Well, improv is all about being in the present moment. The scene unfolds right in front of you and a lot of what happens, you have no clue it's going to happen until it's happening right there on the spot. But for improv actors, while a lot of it happens in the moment, there's a couple of guidelines that they go by in order to make it happen. Now these guidelines are used by the actors, but they're guidelines that we can maybe use to, to see where God is leading us in our understanding of time. So the first rule or guideline of improv is this. You always have to say yes. If you're in a scene and I say, I have an apple, and you say, no, it's not, it's a chocolate bar, the scene comes to a halt. The scene can't keep moving forward. For us in our lives, we first have to say yes. Yeah. We have to say yes to God, and we have to say yes to the gift that God has given to us. Ultimately, this first guideline, saying yes, is all about perspective. It's all about saying yes to the joy that God has given to all of us. The second rule of improv is this. You always have to say yes and. So if you say to me, I have an apple for you, then I would need to add something like, yes, and green apples are my favorite. Where did you find them? It is adding to the scene that makes the scene work for the improv actors. 
saying yes and for us is also really important. Because it's not just enough to recognize that God has given us a perspective, but also to really truly believe that God has a purpose for our lives. This second rule is all about purpose. Recognizing that our time is not a waste because God has a purpose for our lives. God is calling us to whatever it is in our lives through the use of our time. The final rule of improv is this. You always have to be listening and engaging with the other person in the scene. Put a little bit more bluntly, it can't be all about ourselves. This means sometimes you're setting up the joke. Sometimes you're not the one getting it. For improv actors, they say this is the most important rule, but this is also the most difficult rule because it can't be all about you. You have to trust the people that you're in the scene with. For us, this rule is all about people. It's all about recognizing that purpose and perspective of our time comes, and truth comes in our time, when we are spending it with other people. Why is this important? Friends, because this is the model that Christ gives for us. Christ in his lifetime spent his time and his ministry with other people, caring and healing and anointing serving other people. This is a good model for us because the best use of our time is truthfully when we spend it with other people. There's a great quote uh, by a guy by the name of Arnold Bennett in his book Bits and Pieces. He says, time is the inexplicable raw material of everything. Without, with it, all is possible. Without it, nothing. The supply of time is truly a daily miracle an affair genuinely astonishing when one examines it. When you wake up in the morning and lo, your purse is magically filled with 24 hours of unmanufactured tissue of the universe that is your life. It is yours. It is the most precious of possessions. You can only waste the passing moment. You cannot waste tomorrow. It is kept for you. You cannot waste the next hour. It is kept for you. May we be people that find worth in the time that God has kept for us. And in those moments when we feel like throwing up our hands and saying, what a waste of our time, may we see the bigger picture. May we see the bigger picture that we are reminded of today that the value of our time comes from having perspective saying yes to the gift that God has given us comes from purpose. Saying yes and living in to where God is calling us with our time and people. That it's not just our time. It's not just my time. Time is about all of us. Amen.